customers. So the obvious question that we asked ourselves is, uh, can data science help? Right? Uh, now, how did this all start? Right? So uh, just a bit of a history lesson. Uh, so like, like most of the innovations uh, attributed to uh, wars in the history, uh, you know, uh, one thing that happened in the fashion industry uh, is, you know, was around the American Civil War. So uh, before American Civil War, like most of the apparels were, uh, were made to measure. Uh, but the American Civil War called for uh, you know, mass recruitment of soldiers and therefore a need for uh, mass production of, uh, of soldier uniforms. And that was uh, the starting point of uh, you know, ready-made apparel. Now, uh, so while, while people try to fix, fix, the, fix one problem, this just led to, uh, just led to other problems, right? Uh, so the, the problem of, uh, of fitment, right? It, uh, it was more glaring in the, uh, you know, for, for, the, for the women apparel. Uh, and then this this uh, this uh, essentially led to uh, you know led to the beginning of a uh, lot of sizing standards. A lot of sizing standards came up during the period of uh, 1958 to 1983 and beyond. Uh, unfortunately, none of these uh, sizing standards uh, kind of stayed. Right, and the primary reason for uh, for these standards uh, to fail was uh, was that. Uh, the sample on which uh, you know these sample these standards were based was just not representative of uh, the actual uh, women population. Uh, so uh, it so happened that manufacturers uh, you know shunned these uh, standards, and uh, you know uh, they just uh, defined their own uh, sizing sizing standards. And this was uh, the beginning of uh, you know fit fit models, right? So uh, fit models entered around the same period. Uh, each manufacturer had had their own fit models, and uh, their, the apparel and uh, other products were uh, kind of tailored to their to the fit models. So this this was just the beginning of uh, you know all the all the chaos. Um, so essentially, what what makes fit so difficult is 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 is, uh, is two things, right? Uh, one, there is lack of standardization, uh, you know, across across brands for the same size. So uh, you know, brands design their clothes differently uh, using their own uh, sizing standards. The other thing that uh, that is very commonly seen is uh, you know is this uh, demon of uh, vanity sizing, which is which is essentially that uh, you know brands often tend to downsize uh, their products uh, just to appeal to uh, appeal to their to their customers. So no two sizes uh, you know feel the same across across brands. And here's a, here's a simple example, right? So you know we have uh, two formal shirts, one, one by uh, you know, Phosphor Phosphorus, the other one uh, by Raymond. Uh, and uh, you can see that uh, you know, although the size numbers are the same, uh, the actual sizes vary a lot. So, uh, so there, are, there are a bunch of solutions uh, you know, out there. In the offline retail, uh, you know, for example, uh, people have tried to address this somewhat. Uh, by, by the use of mannequins or real models. Uh, there are 3D solutions, uh, there are virtual fitting rooms, uh, and you know, on the other, ex other extreme, you have 360-degree uh, body scanners, uh, which you know, they take complete measurements of, uh, of your customers. Uh, so all these solutions are uh, you know, essentially based on uh, measuring up your customers and uh, uh, then recommending the products uh, accordingly. Right? So essentially, they map, uh, they measure up your customer, the, the customers, and then map those measurements to uh, the product measurements. Uh, some of these solutions have been attempted uh, online. Uh, so again, uh, this requires uh, them to kind of um, uh, get input on the user measurements, and uh, there are some solutions based on you know either, either visualization or or just based on uh, recommending uh, the right size product to, to the customers based on uh, the measurements entered by them. Uh, but again, all these solutions uh, make use of and require uh, the customers to explicitly enter their uh, body measurements, uh, you know, uh, into the online portal. Uh, so of course, this is this is a very laborious process of you know leads to a uh, not very good experience for the users, uh, and therefore, uh, uh, you know, and, and of course, it's not it's not scalable as well, right? Uh, now, our approach, uh, on the other hand. Uh, you know, is based on uh, two primary assumptions. Uh, firstly, we assume that uh, you know we have, I mean, the, the catalog data 
uh, you know, we have access to the actual sizes of these products. Uh, we uh, we also uh, assume that uh, you know we have access to the sales data or, or some uh, some uh, products that the customer already owns. And uh, essentially, the idea is that can we use the products that a customer already owns as a proxy of his or her body measurements? Uh, if we can do that, we can then uh, you know essentially map those to uh, the product sizes. So. Uh, a successful sale to a customer, for example, um, is is a signal uh, uh, of uh, you know those products uh, uh, or you know the size of those size of those products being being uh, fit for that for the customer. On the other hand, if a if a product uh, leads to a return or exchange, uh, you know with a size issue uh, related uh, related reason, then that is an indication of uh, of an incorrect fitment. So, uh, so essentially, this is, a, this is the overall design of uh, you know of our approach, right? Uh, so we have these uh, three data sources, primary data, uh, data sources. Uh, we have the catalog size chart information, and like I said, we have uh, we assume uh, you know access to the actual sizes of the products. Uh, of course, we have the sales data and the and the returns data. And uh, so the the pipeline essentially comprises of uh, you know four key steps. Uh, the first step is that of clustering. Uh, so we basically uh, you know, given given the catalog uh, data, we basically segment it uh, into into products of uh, similar sizes. Uh, that gives us uh, uh, you know the uh, clustered set of uh, pr products. Uh, the next two steps then are to map the products as well as uh, uh, the customers to this uh, common space of uh, of clusters. Uh, so there's a there's a product cluster uh, closeness uh, scoring, and uh, there is also a also a customer cluster support scoring uh, and the fourth step uh, is is then to come up with a combined scoring using using these two uh, matrices and uh, you know use that to recommend the right size products to our to our customers so i'll i'll run through uh, each of this uh, next so this this is the current state of affairs right so bob here uh, you know had made a past purchase of uh, franco in a shoe of size 9 and uh, based on his past experience, uh, you know, when he's making current purchase, he he selects a size nine shoe, a converse shoe again. Uh, but hey, it, it turns out that uh, the the earlier size that he had chosen was a was a you know was based on a UK size standard, uh, while the current shoe that he is choosing is based on the US size standards. So of course, it doesn't fit, right? And uh, he has a poor experience. So. Right, so so clustering, right? So the first step uh, that we that we did uh, that we do is uh, you know we take the actual size uh, uh, data of our you know from our catalog uh, and and segment the products uh, using uh, using clustering mechanism. Uh, this so this essentially gives us uh, clusters of uh, clusters of products, uh, each cluster comprising of all the products which are similar in size. Uh, so we, uh, you know so so we do this for different categories of uh, categories of products. And essentially, we at the end of it, we get uh, uh, you know clusters uh, which are which are of products which are similar. Uh, so uh, so we used uh, uh, you know we used uh, an implementation of uh, K-Medoids. Uh, it's called Clara, which is essentially a clustering algorithm for uh, for large data. Uh, essentially, it it uh, uses you know takes samples of data for for clustering and works very well for uh, for uh, you know large volumes of data. Uh, K was uh, was empirically uh, tuned just you know based on the intercluster distance as well as the intracluster distance between the between the products so once we have uh, so once we do the product segmentation uh, the next step is to uh, find the product cluster closeness uh, so as, so this, this is a simple step uh, you know where you essentially score each product and how you know uh, basically each product cluster pair uh, Based on its distance from that cluster, and uh, normalize it by uh, by the maximum distance between uh, between any two clusters. So uh, essentially, this gives us a, a you know a two-dimensional matrix, a product by cluster matrix, uh, where uh, products of uh, you know who have products of the same size uh, you know tend to be uh, in the same cluster. So you, you see, so you see the Franco Leone size nine shoe uh, coming up in the cluster C two, and uh, the converse size 10 shoe uh, getting a high score for uh, for cluster C2 
Right, so uh, the the other thing that we do is uh, uh, we score the customers, customer closed, uh, customer cluster uh, support, uh, and this is based on uh, the sales and returns data. So, uh, so essentially, uh, all the products that a customer has bought, uh, you know, we kind of uh, map it to uh, to the corresponding cluster, and we end up with this matrix on the left side where we have a customer uh, cluster, the number of sales that we have, that he has, uh, number of purchases that he has done. He or she has done, uh, you know, from that for that uh, of products from that cluster, and uh, come up with a with a score uh, of how uh, you know how much is the customer, uh, uh, or rather, how much is the support for uh, that cluster for that customer. Uh, so we use a simple uh, walls technique to uh, you know it's essentially a uh, uh, you know a, a technique to uh, adjust for sparseness of the data. Uh, Given this matrix, we we come up with a two-dimensional customer by cluster matrix, uh, where you know we, on each row we have a we have a customer and its uh, and its support score for each of the clusters. All right. Uh, the last step then is to come come up with a combined score uh, based on uh, the product cluster uh, closeness and the uh, customer cluster uh, support. Uh, so, given a new SKU uh, that a that a customer is trying to buy, uh, we essentially take uh, all the products belonging to. Uh, so, a product here is so any any product which a you know uh, with a different size, uh, you know, it counts as a different product. So, we take all the products belonging to that SKU, uh, extract the the matrix uh, you know from from the from the product cluster matrix that we had. Uh, and just do a element-wise multiplication with uh, with the customer cluster support uh, matrix, uh, and that gives us uh, a final score for uh, uh, for the for the product and the and the clusters. Uh, so uh, so on, on the right hand side, if you can just uh, you know kind of order uh, that matrix, order the symbols by uh, and just take a row-wise max, uh, that will give you the you know the product that you should recommend to that customer. Right, so uh, right, so essentially, what what this does is that uh, you know now we are able to kind of recommend the uh, the right size uh, to to our customers. Uh, so a customer, uh, you know, who so Bob here who tried to purchase a uh, you know Converse shoe based on his past experience of uh, selector size nine, uh, you know, we kind of interfere and then recommend uh, size ten shoe based on his past purchases. Right, so uh, so currently we have, we have uh, kind of evaluated this uh, this approach for uh, uh, for the shoes category. Uh, essentially, what we did is that you know we used we, we took uh, uh, you know all the data until time certain time t, and then used the next two months data for uh, for evaluating the model. Uh, so on an average, we we see um, you know kind of uh, encouraging uh, accuracy. We see that about uh, you know 88 percent of times we are we are able to accurately uh, recommend the right size to our uh, to our customers. Uh, but one one interesting observation that we that we did uh, have is that uh, you know users often tend to buy for uh, buy for buy for their friends and uh, you know and relatives, uh, and that poses an interesting challenge uh, you know to then kind of recommend the right size uh, to those customers. Uh, but uh, but then like I said uh, you know since we have a you know kind of segmentation so a segmentation based approach uh, so we know. Uh, the the support for each cluster for for each customer. So even if a customer does buy uh, different products uh, belonging to different clusters, uh, he or she you know will get a non-zero uh, support score for these different clusters. Uh, and then uh, so so th th this essentially we can use to uh, you know figure out the different profiles that a customer has, and uh, therefore uh, during a fresh fresh purchase we can uh, we can actually interfere and then uh, probe a customer. Uh, you know, uh, and and check you know that his current purchase is going to be similar to which which particular profile, and use that additional input uh, to then be make a better recommendation to the uh, to the customer. All right, so uh, so yeah, that's what uh, that's what I had. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, if there are any questions, I can take. Hi, um, hi, this is Shakti here. Um, in your talk, you said that um, you have access to ground truth, right? There are two companies with two sizes uh, who claim to be giving two different sizes, but they are probably 
selling the same size shirt, for example. Phosphorus says 41, uh, Raymond says 49, but both of them are, let's say, 45 or something like that. You, ac you have access to the truth anyway, so what stops you from uh, creating your own baseline and then just mapping all those numbers to your baseline and then using that to predict what, uh, for example, if UK size 9 is US, maps to US size 9, then when he's choosing US si uh, UK size 10 or something else, you can just ask him to pr predict U US size 9, right? Because you can always map that. Yeah, actually, actually, it's not it's not that straightforward. Uh, uh, well, uh, I mean, if you look at the actual sizes, uh, in, uh, you know that uh, you know the shoulder lengths and the and the, uh, the length of the product, uh, they tend to vary a lot uh, across even across different sizes. Mm -hmm. So it's not very straight, you know, as straightforward as uh, a UK size nine uh, mapping to a US uh, size ten. Uh, I mean, sometimes there are there are uh, you know the actual lengths might. You know, in one case it might be let's say 30, point, 30 centimeters. It, in the other case, it might be 30.2, and or even 31 centimeters. So the actual size might actually vary a lot, even though uh, uh, you know, even for the same uh, standard, the same standard size. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so the first question that I had, you kind of answered it, saying that you know we have uh, people ordering for somebody else, and I think your answer to that was that you will have in the future profiles which the user would have to select. Is that correct? Yeah. So I mean, if uh, so, currently we don't have that additional input. Uh, so you know, when a user is buying a certain product, uh, we don't know. Uh, whom, who is, who is right, buying because for? Because I think that is a major gap because yeah. at least in our country, we tend to, there yes. would be a guy who's technically savvy and he orders for everybody else. Yeah, I mean, 50% uh, yeah. of the data that we see, uh, I mean, there are cases where people tend to buy, I and mean, they have different multiple profiles. Correct. So we see users buying uh, for cluster C1, but he also has bought for, you know, for products from clusters, you know, some other cluster. Correct. But since we have access to these different uh, segments of products, uh, so we know that this person has multiple profiles. So when he's making a fresh purchase, uh, you know we can kind of interfere and uh, you know kind of tell him that see la based on your uh, past purchases we seem to you know you seem to have these multiple profiles. So uh, if you can just tell us which profile are you buying right. for, then that can be an additional. That's input. the other question that I had because uh, the UI you showed uh, it would just. Uh, show the size that you're recommending without any information saying that that's a recommendation that you're doing and based on analysis. So uh, my, my question is, uh, don't you think that's going to be a problem because what I would say is my size is 8, you put up 10, I'd say come on the system is having a problem, I'll just go for t uh, you know 8 anyways. So yeah. do you have any way of addressing that where you say that instead of showing UK or US standards, say that based on your previous purchases, this is, this, this is the correct size that you should be. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's uh, it's not going to be going to be a hard in, a hard uh, interference, right? It's going to be a soft uh, recommendation that uh, yes, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. the way it's presented, uh, you know, can be can be. Hey, yeah. So basically, my question is around. So currently, you were saying you you are differentiating based on a type of a size, so UK size and US size, right? So let's say even in terms of a product segment, like. Okay, if you are buying a casual shoe or a probably a f uh, floaters or actually the sport shoes, the sizes differ. So, are you planning to have any type of those clusterings as well? Uh, so no, I mean, uh, so it's not really based on the the standards. Uh, like I mentioned, we uh, we rely on the actual sizes of those of the of the shoe or any product, right? So we have access to, uh, for example, in case of shoe, we have access to the length of the shoe or uh, the width. Or in case of uh, a shirt, we know the shoulder uh, length and the actual length of the product. So that is what we use for uh, uh, kind of uh, clustering the products, not really the standard size. Hi, uh, yeah. I have one question. Yeah, just reference to the yeah. previous question. Is it working? Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Uh, I'm audible? Uh, Ashish, Hello. question here? Yeah? yeah, just reference to the previous question. Uh, suppose I use Raymond Shade 42 size and, and I'm going for some unfamiliar uh, brand to me I, or I may use Adidas 9 size shoe I'm, I want to buy Nike so there can be a reference data for me for the customer see if you use this particular you know size 9 of Adidas you go for other brand so this fits you I mean I'm talking from the point of view of customer because right now what I say is it's more of 
driven from the company towards customer. I mean, uh, top to bottom, bottom to top. That's what I'm saying. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't quite get your question. Uh, so suppose question I was? use Raymond 42. Okay. Yes. I feel it comfortable. I go for some other yes. Alan Soli brand. So I'm not sure whether the 42 will fit me. Right. Okay. In that case, uh, can the data help me out yes. to choose the right site for Alan Soli? Yes. Yes. Uh, so essentially, I mean, right, I mean, since we are using the actual dimensions of uh, of the of the product, okay. right? Uh, so it, it might so happen that in that brand, uh, you know, some other size 44 uh, shirt uh, might map to the same cluster, mm -hmm. just based on the actual dimensions of uh, the size attributes of that product. Because most of your, uh, I mean, analysis is based upon the historical data. If I'm a yes. first-time customer. Oh, if it's a first-time customer, uh, yeah. So we do need that additional input. So if we can, so if you can uh, tell us what's there in your wardrobe, for example, we can. Uh, so for a uh, customer who is first-time uh, purchase customer, uh, we can probe him for what's there in his wardrobe and use that information to, uh, you know, do the do the map mapping. Okay, sure. Uh, I have. Hello. Excuse me. Can we just take it offline because okay. otherwise it'll spill over. If that's okay. Sorry. Yes. 